Ashby's Cosplay here with a new tutorial series. So I thought I would start this Adobe Illustrator series because I've come to realize just how handy it can be for cosplayers. You can use it for anything. You can design guns and katanas and ninja stars and whatever other crazy props your characters have. You can design it in Illustrator, print it off, and use it as a blueprint when you're crafting. It's also good for sewing. Let's say you have an embroidery design that you know is going to be hard to draw by hand or you know it needs to be symmetrical and really precise. Illustrator can do that. It's a super powerful tool and it's my absolute favorite Adobe program because of one thing, scalability. That means you can create artwork in Illustrator and scale it up and down as much as you want without losing quality and that's really valuable. Now let's face it, you can use it for lots of uses outside of cosplay. Uh, T-shirt design, print design, lettering, typography, it's, it's fantastic. Or let's say you're an artist that likes to do things by hand, but you want a digital version. You can draw it on paper, scan it in, and digitalize it yourself. It's a crazy awesome tool, and I've been using it for eight years now, and I learned it by watching tutorials and reading tutorials, so I thought I would pay it forward and start a series myself to share my knowledge. As far as my setup goes, I'm using my MacBook Pro, which I got in 2014, and it's running the Creative Cloud version of Adobe Illustrator. Now don't worry if you don't have the Creative Cloud version. If you have an older version, there shouldn't be too many discrepancies between the two, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Completely optional is a mouse. You can use a trackpad and still work just fine. You can also use a tablet if you feel like it, but again, totally not necessary. As far as what's going to be covered in this video, it's going to be the basics. This is intended for people that don't really know a whole lot about Illustrator or maybe they've never even opened it before. So basic things like creating a document, editing artboards, importing reference images, and how to navigate the menu and tools. Once we've done that, we'll be using basic shapes to recreate Kali's buckle from Ruby. And the reason we're doing this design is because I'm doing a Kali cosplay and I just finished doing this in Illustrator. We won't finish it in this video because we'll be using the pen tool. Now the pen tool is great and we'll be introducing it in this video, but I wanted to save that for its own video because it's a really powerful tool and arguably the best part of Illustrator. And it can get a little complicated, so next video. Before we begin, I just want to mention that the source files for this tutorial are in the description below. In the zip file, you will find the original concept art designed by Rooster Teeth as well as my Illustrator file. And the Illustrator file includes the final artwork. So if you don't feel like sitting through this tutorial, bye! Just download it and use it, I don't mind. But if you want to learn how to do this yourself so that you can use it for other cosplays, stick around. So, let's get started. So first off, this is, like I mentioned, the buckle that we'll be working on. Notice how the original art file is really fuzzy, because I brought it in, it was a JPEG, and I scaled it up, I, I stretched it so that I could really get a good look at it, and it's really fuzzy. But if you look at the final artwork, it's nice and crisp and clean. So before we can get into this guy, we're gonna ignore this for a little bit and we're going to start from scratch. So we'll go File and then New, or you can do Command N, and that's gonna open up this window. Now you can name it right away if you want to. I'm not gonna bother because we're just gonna be coming back to this other file. And it's got a couple presets here as far as size and type, so like you can change it to a letter, you can change it from pixels to inches or whatever. I have a tendency to work in pixels because I do web design more than print, but you can do whichever. In this case, it honestly doesn't really matter for what we need. And you can change this to anything really, like if you wanted to, you know, praise Satan or maybe just blaze it. Whatever you want. <laughs> and uh, here we have the color mode. You have CMYK and RGB. Now, in this case, we don't really care because we're mostly going to be sticking to black and white. The gold that I used was actually just extra to make it look nice. But we'll, we'll be doing black and white because we just want to print this out and we'll be cutting it out and using it. 
so color doesn't quite matter. CMYK typically is for print, RGB is for screen. We'll just stick with CMYK for now. And this is pretty much how big it's gonna be. I know there are other ways to, ex to explain PPI, but I'm just gonna say it's how big it's gonna be. So you've got screen, and then you can go up to 300, which is general use for print. Again, at the moment, doesn't really matter because it's all gonna scale. So let's just hit okay and wait for a bit. Boom, now we've got our new file. So you'll see in our file, we've got one artboard. That's this white rectangle right here. You can have multiple artboards if you want and you can access that here. If you don't see this, just click window and then artboard and check that off. You can rename artboard, so let's name this I don't know, home, because we're boring. I don't know. And let's say you have another web page you want to design, like a wireframe for, and you want the same size, you would just hit this guy, boop. And now, second artboard, and let's name you about. Now, one quick little tidbit, if you ever feel the need to reorder these guys, let's, like, you want about to go before home, you can simply drag and drop. So to illustrate that, I'm just gonna stick a shape real quick in here. Don't worry about what I'm doing right now. I will go over that later. <laughs> this is just for an example so you can see it switch. So in our home artboard, we've got this rectangle. In the about, we've got nothing. Now then we can click this guy and move it under. No change yet. Our home one is still on the left. So what you do is you click this guy and you do rearrange artboards. Now that means it'll reorder the artboards to whatever you put here. So we'll click that. And this is just facing. It's generally, the default's pretty good. So we'll just hit okay. And now we've seen that they swap places. If for whatever reason you want to rearrange artboards by hand, you can click this guy right here or hit shift O and now you can drag and drop your artboards wherever you want. And what's nice is they've got these little lines too so that you can really get them in line. Now that I've got this open, I can also show you how to resize them. Let's say you don't feel like hailing Satan. Boo. <laughs> and you want to do something else. So you can either do it manually by hand or you can be precise and use this. So that'll fix the width, this will fix the height, any shape you want. And if you want to edit the other artboard, you would just click it and do the same thing. So we can, I don't know, let's make you a square. Nope, just kidding. And square, hooray! If you want to close this, I typically just hit V. V is the direct or is the select tool. It can also be found here, so just click that. And now we're no longer in that, and we're back to normal. Speaking of V, uh, V is a tool that we use a lot. It is a select tool. And for instance, you can select shapes and move them around. The direct select tool is something that I use a lot too, and you can get that by hitting A, or this guy right here. And this allows you to be really precise with what you select. So V selected the rectangle as a whole, but A, the direct select, can click precise points. So now I can move this guy anywhere I want. And of course, like most programs, Command Z or Control Z is undo. So if you fudged it, you can just go back. Easy as that. Uh, something you might have noticed is I move the artboards around a lot to see what I'm doing, and I've been doing that with the hand tool, which can be found here. You can either click it, or you can press H, and it'll do the same thing. I tend to rely on keyboard shortcuts a lot. It's so much faster than having to click to drag your mouse all the way over here and find it. So I tend to rely on H and V and A quite a bit. Now that we've shown you artboards, how to edit them, how to rearrange them, how about we import a graphic? 
So let's just use any old graphic to begin with. In fact, let's... I don't know why we have two artboards. Let's delete one. So we're gonna select... We're gonna hit V again. We're gonna select this artboard. Notice how it changed here. And we're just gonna hit this trash can. Bye-bye. No more. And you know what? Let's delete this guy too. Goodbye. So, to import your reference material, you should already have it downloaded on your computer or saved somewhere where you know the location. And you'll hit File and Place, or whatever keyboard shortcut it shows you. And then you'll navigate to it. I already have this. Let's do... Let's do Cali Profile, just because I feel like it. Also, I said Cali. It's Kali. I don't know why, but I mispronounced her name a lot. So you'll see it hasn't been placed yet. I've got this interesting cursor that shows a thumbnail of the artwork. But what you, what's nice is you can either click it and it'll just show up. So I'm just going to do that. Boop. And it shows up whatever size. Or, and let's do this again. File, place. And we'll select it again. Now, instead of just clicking, you can also drag. So instead of releasing right away, you can drag it and see how it's proportional to the ratio of the image. So you can make it like tiny or whatever. So let's just do like that. So now I've got two collies. So that's how you place an image. So those are the basics that you need. Let's go to our main file. And don't save. Sorry, Kali. So you've got this guy open. And it's pretty cool. I've already labeled it buckle, and I've already got some things for you here. These are your layers. And this is where your artwork's gonna live. So let's look at this bottom one. I've named it reference and I've already locked it. By locking it, that means it's not gonna move, you can't edit it. And this is really handy for reference images because you don't want to accidentally click it and move it around when you're trying to work on top of it. So here we've got the reference image. I'm gonna unlock it real quick so I can select it. And you just select here and see, now it is ready. Now, what's good for tracing is transparency. We need to turn it down so we can really see what we're doing. But sometimes it's just trying to draw on top of it. It's hard. It's like, you know, tracing with paper. It helps to have a light underneath it. So in this case, we want to turn the opacity down. So I'm just going to select my image, go over to transparency, boop, and let's turn the opacity to 50. And see how it's much lighter now. Again, if you can't see this transparency panel, you would just go to Window, and then scroll down to Transparency. And then we'll just tuck this away, and we'll go ahead and hide it, because we don't want to see it anymore. Next up, let's go over this guy, Navigating the Menu and Tools. Now, I've already shown you a couple, like Hand, Artboard, uh, select, direct select, but let's just show you a couple other ones that are going to be relevant. We don't really need text, but hey, there it is. What we will be using quite a bit is the shape tool. So in this case, it defaults to rectangle. If you click it and hold, you can see what else is available. So we've got rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon star, and flare. I don't think I've ever used flare. I should try that out later. But anyway, rectangle is the default and you can hit M to select it, or you could also do L for ellipse. Makes it really easy, especially because those two shapes are really common, and we'll be using those quite a bit. So let's just jump right into it. Oop, I've got a stray layer here. Let's just delete you. So I've got a layer for you that's the finished artwork, but I also went ahead and made a layer for you that you can work on. So. Let's zoom in a little bit. You could do Command Plus, or you can use this guy right here to zoom. I generally don't like doing that. I like keyboard shortcuts, but whatever works for you. So we're gonna zoom in, and we're gonna zoom in quite a bit, actually, because we wanna focus on these guys. So if you zoom back out when it's like less fuzzy, you'll notice they look kinda like three lines or rather two, two lines, one here and one here. But then you also have to take into account this line down here, which is like the bottom border of this shape. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to use the rectangle tool. So let's zoom back in. 
And oh, let's make sure that we also have like a good color that we're working with. So this guy is your fill. So let's hit M, rectangle. So it's fill white. So you'll see that it's white right here. Well, we don't want that. We want a stroke of black so that we can really see what we're doing. So one easy way to do that is you can click this little guy and it, it's the default. So the default is white and black and you can switch it however you want. So this is white fill, black outline. And if you click this, now it's black fill, white outline. Well, we want a black outline with no fill. So let's switch it back. So now black outline. And instead of a white fill, we'll have nothing. So let's click this guy. So now it's just black outline. We've already got our rectangle selected, rectangle tool. So, and this part's a little tough just because it's so fuzzy. But you want to click one corner and then drag it out your shape. And boom. Now you have a, a rectangle. Yay! <laughs> you can hit V and click away to see what you've done. Now, uh, actually, you know what? We want to optimize this and we want to make sure that this is really symmetrical. So one thing I want to do real quick, let's go ahead and delete this guy. Again, we want this to be really symmetrical. So this line going down the middle is what we're going to base it off of. But we don't have a line right there. We, we don't have anything. So what you can do is you can create a guide and this will help you a lot when doing this. So one way you can create a guide is you can just click this side of your ruler. If your ruler is not showing up, you can hit Command R. And you'll just click this and drag it across. And you'll see this really hairline thin line. It's, it might be hard to see. You just drag this across and let's put this right smack dab in the middle. Boop. Oh, it's not showing. Well, keyboard shortcut to the rescue. Command uh, colon will show it. You can also go to view and then guides to hide and to show. Obviously we want this showing. So let's go back, let's do our rectangle again, but this time instead of going all the way across, we want to just start here in the middle and then go our way out. So we've got one and then let's do it again. Here's another one. And then we'll snap it in place to this next one. So it's two rectangles, but really it looks like just one line in the middle of them because they're the same width and they're right on top of each other. We'll do one more. We'll do this one over here again from the middle and then all the way out. So something like this. And you know what? Let's, let's zoom out and look at our reference again. You'll notice that this has an interesting shape to it. it. They're not actually squared off like this. So we're going to use our lips tool, actually. So let's extend these guys out just a little bit and I'll show you why in a bit. We're gonna just extend these out. We're just interested in these lines. Not, we're not even interested in this guy yet but just these lines. Now using the ellipse tool here, that, or L, you can drag and make this nice curved shape, like so. And let's make it line up with that. So now this just looks like a weird hodgepodge of shapes. How are we gonna get from this to this nice clean thing? Well there's this awesome tool called Pathfinder, and it's over here to the right. And it has a lot of cool things as far as what you can do with multiple shapes. You can combine them. So, you know what? Let's just try it. Select all of them. You can just drag, or you can hit Command A to select all. Let's select all of them and then hit this and just see what happens. Now it's just one big shape combined. There's also the uh, minus front tool. So it'll take whatever shape is on the front and it'll 
erase that from the shape below it. So like, let's do like this circle with this guy. Just, just because. And we'll hit this. Ah, see, now we have a nice curve. You see where we're going? Well, there's a faster way to do this actually, so that we don't have to do this every single time for all of these. Instead of copying this two more times, putting it on top of this one, and then erasing it, doing it again, and doing the minus front. Instead, we can just do this. So we'll select all of them, and we'll hit this guy. And what this does is it pretty much separates all the overlapping shapes into their own shape. So we'll hit this, and we don't see much of a difference. So let's just open this guy up. Actually, let's undo so you can see exactly what happened. So notice how these are all four shapes, four separate shapes. Well, we hit this guy and it groups them all. If we expand this now, instead of just four shapes, as in three rectangles and one ellipse, we've got all of these. We can ungroup it real quick by selecting it and doing Command Shift G. And now you can select and notice how these are all their own shapes instead of four shapes. So we can select this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and delete them. And now we have this beautiful curve. Let's see what else we can do with basic shapes. Here's one where you don't necessarily need to reflect it. We'll, we'll get to reflecting in a bit, but you won't need to reflect it because it's already like perfectly symmetrical. So this is a good example of how you should analyze a, sh a design to see what common shapes are already in it. So here we notice this could be a rectangle. Here, it could be an ellipse. So let's click right here in the middle, and we're gonna hold down the Alt key. And what that does is instead of it going, instead of pulling the shape out from where you clicked like this, notice how it's going from left to right. Instead of that, what it'll do is it'll go out from the center. So I click the center of what will be our circle or our ellipse, and now I'm pulling it. So notice how it's going out from the center which is pretty cool. So out from the center, and we'll just pull, push and pull until we get what we want. And that looks about right. And let's do the same thing with a rectangle, because this looks kind of like, just like a rectangle. So we'll hit M, or go over here, go in the center, click, and then hold down Alt, and then pull out. And so now it's all centered. Now, I know you could have done that here with this guy. You could have just as easily gone here and done this. But we wanted to make sure that this edge is symmetrical on both sides. So that's why we split it in half. Now, I keep talking about reflect. Let's just go ahead and do it so that you know what the heck I'm talking about. Reflect is one of these great object tools. Oops, I have to have something selected first before I can. So you can select a bunch of shapes, go to Object Transform, and there are a few different things you can do. You can move it, you can rotate it, reflect it, scale it, or shear it. Now let's just do, let's do Reflect, because that's what's most relevant for us. You hit Reflect and it brings up this menu, and this really handy thumbnails to show you exactly what it's going to do. There's Horizontal, and there's vertical. We'll be needing vertical because our line that we're reflecting goes this way. So we'll do that, and you can even preview it. So notice how the curved edge is on the right side now, instead of the left. Now before you hit OK, in fact you're not gonna hit OK, because you want to hit copy. Now this will make a copy of it while still retaining the original shapes from before. So let's see it go. Boop. 
So now notice how there, it looks like there's just like a lot of shapes on top of each other, and that's because there are. So you've still got this guy selected that you just made. You can just click it, hold down shift, which will keep it in line, and drag it off to the right. Holding, holding shift, make sure you stay like on the X or Y axis, so you can move nice and straight this way, or you can move up and down. It's much better than trying to freehand it. So we'll do that, and then we'll just drag this over here. Oop. And now, I'm gonna hide the guide real quick just so we can see what we're doing. And now we've got this guy. Uh, this doesn't look right though, like, this line is here, and that doesn't show up in the reference image at all, so what do we do? Well, we just combine shapes. So, let's select these two, hit the combine, hit the- oh, hello, sorry, I accidentally rotated. Select these two, combine, and then select the last two, and also combine. And that gets rid of that little middle shape. So we got a little ahead of ourselves. The way that I did this when I did the completed product, when I did this guy, was I only did one side of it. Oh, what did I just do? I didn't do later. I only did the left side of it. So rather than doing this piece and then reflecting it, and then this piece, and then reflecting it, and this piece. I did it all in one go. So in instead, I just did the left half, and then selected all of it and reflected. I just wanted to show you how that works, so that you would have an idea. But let's move on. <laughs> let's do let's do one more. Let's do one more. You know what, first let's combine this guy so that it doesn't look so dorky with all that. Let's do one more. Let's do this guy. So, here you'll notice that the concept art is actually not super symmetrical. That could be because it was drawn by hand or who knows. Maybe it's just because like I can't get that exact like middle of the pixel, which is also a possibility. That's okay. So we're gonna do this little shape down here. And we're gonna hit, uh, we hit L for the ellipse, and we'll do like estimate the center of the ellipse. And again, we're on right here. And we're gonna drag until we get our ellipse. And before we do this shape, which is gonna require the pen tool, I want to show you the pen tool over here, because this shape is a lot easier to do with the pen tool, actually. So we're going to hit P, pen tool is over here, and hit P, and we're going to click this top part, and we're going to click this bottom part. When you click it, do not release. Hold it down. And now, I want you to drag it to the... To the to the right and down. And you'll see this interesting curve starting to form. This is gonna be your really rough intro to the pen tool. It's super powerful and it takes quite a bit of getting used to figuring out what direction does what curve. But for now, you can just kind of like mess with it and figure out where you need to drag the mouse or cursor so that you get the curve you want. So here we need to drag down and to the right and it'll create this curve and then we'll finally release. And now we've got this guy. And real quick I'm just gonna click this guy to notice how it's got this other curve that's wanting to go. And that's because this line, this bezier, is coming out. And we don't want that. So I'm just gonna click this again. And notice it got rid of that. Well, actually, since we're trying to be as symmetrical as possible, we're not going to do this part. So we're just going to close it. 
See how the cursor has this nice little circle? That means that you can close the loop. So we'll just hit, we'll just left click and it's done. We'll be going over the pen tool in the next video. And that will take care of all these curves because circles and rectangles just aren't going to cut it for these guys. I hope you enjoyed that introductory look at Illustrator. I know it looks like we didn't make a whole lot of progress on actually designing the buckle, but that's just because there was so much to show you as far as the program itself with the menu and the tools and just the overall concept of using Illustrator, like seeing things as a series of shapes that can be combined and subtracted to make different shapes. It, it can take a little while to wrap your head around that. Um, so that was basic shapes and just basic layout. I'll introduce other concepts as they become relevant. I don't want to overload you. Next time, we'll finish out the buckle with the pen tool. And like I mentioned, the pen tool can be kind of nuts. It takes a while to master, but it's really worth it once you do because it's just, you can use it for everything. So I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time. Bye.